Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. An appeals court enforces the Texas law that bans some late-term abortions. The White House admits President Obama lied when he promised that you could keep your doctor and health care insurance. And a D.C. court rules against Obamacare's about abortion mandate. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Fox News reports a federal appeals court issued a ruling last Thursday reinstating most of Texas's controversial new abortion restrictions, just three days after a lower court federal judge ruled that they were unconstitutional. But now, apparently, they are constitutional and the Texas law can restrict some abortions. A panel of judges at the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in New Orleans said the law requiring doctors to have admitting privileges at a nearby hospital can take effect while a lawsuit challenging these restrictions moves forward. The panel issued the ruling after District Judge Lee Yackel said the provision serves no medical purpose. But the panel's decision to overturn him, in other words, there is a medical purpose, means that at least 12 abortion clinics now will not be able to perform the abortion procedure starting as soon as last Friday. In its 20-page ruling, the Fifth Circuit ruled that the U.S. Supreme Court has held that having the incidental effect of making it more difficult or more expansive to uh, procedure to procure an abortion cannot be enough to invalidate a law that serves an otherwise valid purpose, one not designed to strike at the right to an abortion itself. Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott, who is now running for governor of Texas, had made an emergency appeal to the conservative Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, arguing that the law requiring doctors to have admitting privileges is a constitutional use of the legislature's authority. Abbott said in a statement last week Thursday that this unanimous decision is a vindication of the careful deliberation by the Texas legislature to craft a law to protect the health and safety of Texas women. Texas Republican Governor Rick Perry also spoke out praising the ruling last week. Isn't it interesting now, and thank you for that report from Fox News, I am uh, concerned a little bit about this, and I'll tell you where I come down on this. As we try to discern the spirits, uh, of course, we see all the players involved. We see certain women who are pregnant, sometimes out of wedlock. We see men who are involved in that, who are sometimes excluded from the choice to abort that child. And we, of course, we see the baby in the mother's womb. And there's also pl players on the political scene, right? There's legislators. Uh, we talked about candidate for uh, Democrat governor of Texas, Wendy Davis, and how she filibustered to demand abortions. We talked about Governor Rick Perry and how he supported the, you know, five-month ban on, abor on late-term abortions. But basically, this Texas law, which I don't support because it authorizes abortions earlier than five months. If, it, if the baby is only three months in the womb, then, then you can kill the baby. So I don't support that. There is, however, with all these people and with all these rules going on, there are other spirits. Where's the spirit of God in this? Where are the demonic spirits and where are the angels? And how do they inform our human morality when we're making these difficult decisions? As I've said, uh, we discern, and, and it's very complicated here, uh, but the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and these judges have ruled that banning some abortions is constitutional. And of course, I discern the Holy Spirit when they ban abortions. The problem is the demonic spirit in them, and, and it's, it's conflicted, they may be influenced by God and by the devil at the same time, authorizes abortions for babies younger than five months in the pregnancy. So there's this 
there's this horse trading going on, and, and I sense that's demonic, because even if one child is authorized to be killed by the courts, if one child is authorized to be killed by the law in Texas, by the legislators, that's just the devil. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. That's a human life. It's a person in the womb. And here's what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So let's think about that. What does God's word say about when life begins? Does it begin at conception? No, it actually begins before I formed you in the womb. Before conception, it begins in the mind of God. And if God thought that child into existence, and of course the biology begins at conception, but even before that, it began in the mind of God. If God thought that into existence, that's a living child in the mind of God. God says, before you were born, I consecrated you. I've appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And when the government comes in to kill that prophet to the nations, they're violating the command and the idea of God who supports life. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray in Jesus' name that you will end the Holocaust, which is abortion, that you will sort the wheat from the chaff, that you will help protect and define all persons beginning at conception biologically, beginning before conception in the mind of God. Father, we pray as you think of these children that you would protect them, that you would enable us and give us as citizens the power to influence our legislatures, our courts, and to elect godly government so your justice will be established here and end the killing of innocents. Father, bless these children and help them be a prophet to the nations, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Excuse me. When we take a short break, we're going to talk about the White House now admitting that Obamacare was a lie. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad health care law is now forced, forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583 the Life Begins a Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Welcome back, God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps and you're watching PIJN News. Our next story comes from Newsmax who reports that White House spokesman Jay Carney admitted last Monday that some Americans will not, after all, be able to hold on to their current health care plans under Obamacare, despite the president's 2009 emphatic promise, if you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. However, now some two million Americans have received cancellation letters in the past month. They've lost their health care insurance because of the Obamacare restrictions 
which prevents your insurance company from selling you the plan that you already had. Carney said this, so it's true there are existing healthcare plans on the individual market that do not meet those minimum standards and therefore do not qualify for the Affordable, Affordable Care Act. He said this in response to a question, an earlier remark by David Axelrod, a senior advisor to President Barack Obama during his first term, the Weekly Standard reported. Another news source, NBC News, citing unnamed sources, reported that the administration knew at the time when the president made that promise that some 50%, as many as 80% of Americans, of those with individual insurance policies could expect to be canceled, largely because their policies would not meet Obamacare's minimum standards of coverage. NBC's experts say the cost of the new policies will now skyrocket. Axelrod told MSNBC a vast majority of healthcare excuse me, of Americans can keep their health insurance plans if they like it. At a later White House press briefing, Carney gave this explanation. Well, what the president said was that everybody said here all along was there's going to be changes brought about by the Affordable Health Care Act to create a minimum standard of coverage. Well, that's what he's saying now. But what did the president say back then? Here's what he said. No matter how we reform health care, we will keep this promise to the American people. If you like your doctor, you'll be able to keep your doctor, period. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan, period. No one will take it away, no matter what. Now, that's what the president said in 2009. But what actually was in the Obamacare regulations? is it buried as early as July of 2010. And this is according to the NBC, excuse me, NBC report. The government knew that that promise was not true at the time that he said it. And they knew that because it was buried in the regulations. There was a law that the estimate <coughs> that because of normal turnover, the individual insurance market, 40 to 67% of customers will not be able to keep their current policy. That was in the report that was attached to the law when the senators voted on it. Isn't that interesting now? The president made this promise, and yet in the law that he was promising to pass, it said, oh, 40 to 67% of Americans are going to lose their health care insurance. No wonder millions are getting cancellation letters, because they lied to you. And they knew it. Here's some more names that came out of the CNN report. Senate Democrats voted unanimously three years ago to support the Obamacare rule. And here are some of the names of the Senate Democrats who voted for Obamacare unanimously. By the way, they're up for re-election this next year. You should be interested to, to know their names. Louisiana Senator Mary Landrieu. You remember the Louisiana Purchase? Well, that was a euph euphemism, not the one in the 1800s, but the one where they actually gave Senator Landrieu extra funding for Louisiana in order to buy her vote to pay for Obamacare. She betrayed the people. And oh, by the way, now she's saying, well, I didn't really think that we should implement Obamacare right away. Why don't we delay it for another year? Because she's got an election coming up. But let's remember people, she betrayed the citizens by voting for Obamacare and she was the deciding vote. Other senators, including Gene Shaheen, Mark Pryor, Kay Hagan, and Mark Begich. The uh, Arkansas senator particularly troubles me, and North Carolina, and of course, uh, Begich and Shaheen. Uh, you know, all of these five now, even though they voted unanimously to pass Obamacare, now they're backpedaling. Now they're saying, oh, well, we support delaying Obamacare for another year. You know what they're trying to do? They just want political cover so they can go home and deceive their own people again to try to get reelected. Are we going to fall for this? Let's discern the spirits. And thanks to CNN, thanks to NBC for all that reporting. But let's take a moment and analyze what is the spirit inside of these politicians that lies to the American people, even when they know that 
you're not going to be able to keep your doctor. You're not going to be able to keep your health and care insurance. That over 2 million, uh, is, they're predicting now up to 129 million Americans could receive cancellation letters in the next year. That's like almost everybody. Almost everybody's health care insurance is going to be canceled or substantially transformed by the Obamacare bureaucracy, sometimes doubling your premiums. I haven't talked to one person whose premiums have dropped who's actually saving money. Do you know anybody? I'd like to know. Call us at 866-Obey-God. I'd like to talk to somebody whose health care premiums have dropped. It's not happening because they lied to you. And that's a demonic spirit. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6, six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Oh, by the way, Obamacare is paying for abortions and shedding innocent blood. Let's pray against this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we rebuke the demonic lying spirit inside of some of these people. And Father, as far as they're misinformed or they're naive or they're just, they want socialist policies, we can almost forgive that. But when they lie to us, Father, they have crossed a line and they do not deserve our trust. Father, I pray that you will vote them out of office, that you, God, I'm not telling anybody in this audience how to vote. I pray that you, God, would remove them from power and, and rebuke that lying spirit inside of them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right, let's take one more short break. When we come back, the D.C. court is now appealing the Obamacare ruling on abortion funding. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad health care law is now forced, forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Welcome back. Thank you for watching PIJN News. Our last story today comes from National Review, who reports a courtroom victory against the abortion provisions of Obamacare. A divided panel of the D.C. Circuit ruled this morning in Gillardi versus U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, that two brothers, Francis and Philip Gillardi, Christian men who own and operate a food supply company, are entitled to the federal RIFRA relief. In other words, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act protects their religious right to a preliminary injunction against the imposition of the abortion mandate, the Health and Human Services mandate, that forces them to pay for not only contraception, but abortifacient abortion pills that kill innocent children. The primary opinion 
which I personally believe was inspired by the Spirit of God, written by Justice Janice Rogers Brown, rules this. First, that closely held companies, uh, such as those owned by the Gillardis, do not have any rights under RIFRA. And if we think that part of the decision is incorrect, that actually corporations also have religious rights. But here, she took it one step further, and this is the good part. She determined that secular corporations, uh, although they do not have free exercise rights, they're owned by people who do have those free exercise rights. And although the line between secular and religious corporations might not be easy to draw, and by the way, this does not hinge upon the difference between a for-profit and a non-profit distinction, but a secular and religious corporation is, you know, there's two kinds of corporations out there. You can have a for-profit religious corporation. She said, uh, the, she conceded that they are indeed religious corporations. In her ruling, Judge Brown said that the Girardis themselves have been injured by the HHS mandate. Even if their corporation was not injured, the Girardis themselves were injured in such a way that is separate and distinct to the injury to their companies. The HHS mandate, Obamacare, burdens their exercise of religion by pressuring them to approve and endorse the inclusion of objectionable coverage, in other words, abortion pills, in their company health care plans. Here's a quote from the judge. And thank God for this good ruling. Listen to her words now. They can either abide by the sacred tenets of their faith and pay a penalty of over $14 million and cripple the companies they have spent a lifetime building, or they can become complicit in a grave moral wrong. In other words, kill children or pay a $14 million fine. Well, that's an untenable choice. They have a religious freedom right to not pay for abortion drugs. And this man, President Barack Obama, is now pushing not just the Gillardis, but he's also appealing the Hobby Lobby case to force the Green family to pay for abortions. And that's just not right. We discern a demonic spirit in that. Uh, and by the way, that's my commentary. Most of that story was from the National Review. President Obama is continuing to argue that for-profit businesses must pay for abortion drugs. Other petitions for certiorari to the U.S. Supreme Court from three federal appeals court rulings on the HHS mandate are already before the Supreme Court. It's a safe bet that the court will soon grant review in one or more of these cases. And today's ruling makes it all the more likely that the court will ensure that the questions presented extend beyond the RIFRA, Religious Freedom Restoration Act, rights of for-profit corporations to include the rights for their individual owners. That's the report from National Review. Let's discern the spirits for a moment. Is there a demonic spirit that is telling American business owners, Christians like you and me, that you can go out and buy and sell, you can go out and do business, but you cannot have the, the legal protections of incorporating yourself if you're a Christian? That somehow these religious freedoms the First Amendment, for example, only applies to you if you're not a corporate business person. That it only applies to private citizens. But if you go into business, if you incorporate, then you lose your First Amendment rights. Is there a demonic spirit that is telling you that if you buy or sell as a corporation, you have to take that mark upon your wrist or upon your forehead? In other words, you have to kill innocent children as the price of staying in business as a corporation. Yeah, there is a demonic spirit. It's called the mark of the beast. And here's what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13. He that, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he provides, in other words, the beast, the devil, the antichrist, provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except that he has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is the anti-Christian persecution. We're in the end times, people. It's here. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray against this demonic spirit which would punish Christian business owners if they refuse to pay for abortions. And thank God for the spirit of God in this judge, uh, Janice Brown, and God bless her for at least getting part of the ruling right to give us freedom to refuse to pay for abortions. Give us that freedom now in the Supreme Court. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break and we'll pray about tomorrow's show.
Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Want your voice heard by multiple congressmen? At FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for giving your best donation today at PrayInJesusName.org. I don't take a dime of salary from donations to our nonprofit, but the Bible says this in Proverbs chapter 28. He who gives to the poor will never want, but he who shuts his eyes will have many curses. On tomorrow's show, President Obama purges over 197 officers from the U.S. military. We'll see you tomorrow. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.